future of ultra-fast lasers will be more power. The application in secondary sources. The futures of ultra-fast lasers will be structured. What does ultra-fast lasers mean for the applications? In one word, throughput. We will do see a necessary paradigm shift from micro nowadays macroscopic applications to macroscopic large-scale applications. Just as an example, we could activate the surface, change the tripodology, activate it in a way that we do see hydrophobia, hydrophily, or change the optical parameters of the surface. What are the most important questions we have to ask ourselves to make sure not to be left behind in terms of ultra-fast lasers? If you would scale the average power, there are basically two ways to do so. Either increase the repetition rate of the laser source or increase the pulse energy or to both in parallel. But for both ways, we have to find the right optical approaches to get out the throughput we would like to get. When talking about ultra-fast lasers, we are also talking about beam shaping. What does it mean and what is it useful for? So the term structured light or beam shaping refer to tailoring light in all, in all its spatial degrees of freedom. For example, amplitude, phase or polarization. And we use beam shaping and customized focus distribution for subtle micro and nano machining and at the same time exploiting the full energy and power performance of our ultra fast laser sources. How do you realize these shapes? In our case, laser foci are manipulated by computer holography where the wave nature of light is manipulated to uh, tailor field components that shape the foci. Are there any examples or use cases for prime beam shaping? Yes, we have a product here, the top cleave cutting optics. Most interestingly, we do have a focus distribution where the transverse components are on the range of a few microns and the length of the beam can be adapted, for example, to cut architectural glass, which means in, a, in the scaling of centimeters. Completely new is our holographic 3D beam splitting concept where we can use almost identical focus copies within a large number that can be arbitrarily distributed within a working volume. And this, for example, can be used to cut glass with a tailored edge in order to protect the substrates from cracking or chipping in the event of an impact. What is laser-induced secondary radiation? What we have in mind here is using our technology uh, to make the next generation of particle accelerators, X-ray sources and so on happening. The main driver beyond that is the possibility of lasers to achieve highest intensities which have not yet been achieved so far. So now of course we all want to know what are potential applications here. We are using a laser, it's a drive laser, uh, which is converted by any kind of sophisticated process into a second source. The second source can be another photon, which is converted into the most extreme UV, ultraviolet light, extreme ultraviolet light, or maybe even into the X-ray uh, light. A secondary source process can also generate particles like light electrons which obtain by the laser the speed of light or it can be heavier particles by TNSA process. Think about how, uh, what it would mean to be able to create neutrons in the future um, by pressing the knob of a laser. What do you think what are the big challenges we are facing right now? Lasers would enable X-ray sources of such high brightness that you could get point-clear pictures of what's going on in your body, especially in soft tissue. It could enable, potentially in the future, a revolution in mammography. The challenge of that is we simply need to build it, we need to prove it, and we need to bring costs for such systems down to a level where the machines, medical devices, industrial CT machines can accept for the cost structures. What do you think? What will the future of ultra-fast lasers look like? Write us a comment or create your own content by using our official hashtag ChallengeTrumpLaser. And if you want to see more of the laser world of photonics 2022 or you want to get to know more about the topic itself, then simply follow the link in the video description. Thanks for watching and see you then.